What's up guys? Today for our Delicious Max tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a wobble base. Why a wobble base? Well, because we are great big sellouts. Um, it turns out that the, the women of Valencia Street are very pretty, but they're also into something called dubstep. Um, what is dubstep? I have no idea, but it involves something called wobble base, and damn it, there is, look, we're, we're going to make wobble base, and it's, that's just, that's the end of it. Um, it's 2011, there's no more dignity. Um, we're all just trying to sleep with each other before the robots kill us, so let's get to it. Um, wobble base. What is wobble base? Well, wobble base is actually very simple. Um, you have a tone generator and a filter and an LFO that controls the parameters of that filter um, at a slow, perceptible rate, and that's it. Um, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so this is going to be uh, an instrument that we play with MIDI, so let's make sure that we can get MIDI in. Um, make a MIDI in here. I've got my MIDI keyboard here, my brand new MIDI keyboard, which is, despite its size, incredibly awesome uh, MIDI parse. Uh, not that it's bad to be small, I mean. Alright, so MIDI in and select, in this case, the micro key keyboard. Um, and notes should come out of here. Um, good, that's all set up. Let's just make sure it's working. Bum, 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 bum. Cool, it works. Uh, okay, so to actually make the tone, uh, traditionally the bass uses a square wave. Um, I don't know if you, it's a small academic departure here, I don't know if you know, but there's, it's not for nothing that uh, square waves and sawtooth waves are so important. It happens that the square wave uh, can actually be made by adding together the partial, uh, sorry, the first fundamental and all the odd partials. And the sawtooth wave can be made by adding the first fundamental and every partial. And of course, you can get the even partials by subtracting one from the other. So I think it might be cool if we make uh, the timbre of our bass tone controllable by weighting either the even or the odd partials. To do that, we're just going to use a rectangle wave to get all the odd partials. And if we shift uh, those partials up by an amount equal to the fundamental frequency, we should, of course, get the even frequencies only. Let's we'll see what I mean in a second. Um, oh, that's... <laughs> I wonder what that would sound like, but it's wrong. So, uh, let's see, we want to be able to set the frequency, and then we'll have a line object in case we want to change at, uh, we want to change the frequency continuously, plug that into the frequency of the rect and to the amount that we're going to shift by, connect these two like this, uh, move these down so it's easier to see, and then add these multiply tildes here, and we'll multiply these by, um, some scale factors so we can weight one versus the other. I'll add an H slider and make it float, give it a range of one. Cool. And here is take one minus the value that comes out of that. So now um, when this is high, the value out will be here will be low, and when this is low, the value out of here will be high. So we'll all we'll really be hearing either the even or the odd partials, or both when it's halfway in between. Um, clean this up a bit. That looks horrible. Clean this. Yes, awesome. Um, add tilde to add these together. No, to add these together. And now let, let me show you what I mean when I say even and odd partials. Uh, here's a gain and an easy DAC. Um, a spectroscope. Cool. So here's what, um, say, uh, 220 hertz looks like. Okay, here's not what 220 hertz. Is. There we go. Uh, sorry, I'm the lab. So you can see when this is all the way to one side, we're getting only one partials. In this case, I think the even partials. All the way over here, one of the odd partials. And in the middle, we get a sawtooth wave kind of like sound. We have all the partials coming together. So um, anyway, that'll be a cool MIDI thing. Well, sorry, we'll be able to control the timbre from MIDI, um, which is pretty cool and we'll be able to sort of customize the sound of our wobble bass in that way, which will make us all the more desirable to the hipstresses of Valencia Street. Um, okay, so we finished that. Uh, let's make it playable for MIDI. So we'll add an ADSR tilde, um, give it 20 and 20 for the attack and decay, so it'll be a bit of a pop. Um, doesn't matter, so this is all, who cares? It's, we'll all be dead soon anyway. Um, and then let's multiply these together. Multiply the envelope by the thing. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap. I lost my patch cord, I'll never get it back. 
Um, okay, now as for actually triggering the ADSR, and I want this to be a bass, uh, a mono bass, so I want the notes to glide into each other if I play one on top of the other, all that crap, if you remember we were solved that already in another tutorial. So I'm going to do something that I rarely do when I patch, but should do much, much, much more often, which is reuse stuff that I've already done and solved before. Um, you have no idea how many times I've written the same patch because I am a gibbering, drooling fool. Um, <laughs> Bit of a confessional there. So anyway, uh, here's our note parse. Uh, just stuff I've already written before in another tutorial, and you can go check that out if you like. What comes out of the left outlet here is going to be um, the note value. Middle outlet here is going to be one or zero, whether we're playing a note or offing a note. And out of here is going to be the slide, if we are in fact going to slide from one note to the other. So add an append here, which will append the slide if we do slide. Throw that up here, which will set the slide. Um, this is note on uh, the pitch of the note, if it is a note on. And what comes out of this outlet here is just, um, I'm not sure if it is actually zero. Sorry, excuse me, I'm not sure if it is actually zero, if it's a note off. Um, so just in case, we'll do this, which will just be um, zero for zero and one for anything else. And that should be all we need to now be able to play this as if it were a shitty synth and not a cool wobble bass. at the slide time so the slide's not working but let's try it now oh my god look at us we're already djs all right so now we need to add the filter uh, we're going to use biquad the filter for boring people like me um, and filter coef which gives us filter coefficients from normal human parameters um, we're going to use a bandpass filter here because um, you can use low pass if you want, uh, but no one will respect you. Uh, wait, I think it goes frequency, gain, and then Q. Is that right? Frequency, yes. Um, okay, so our filter coefs all set up. Now, as we adjust the Q, well, Q is going to be a parameter that we're going to want to vary. Um, so as we adjust Q, we might attenuate the sound coming through our filter somewhat. So I'm going to add a compressor here. Um, just to even out the, the loudness of the sound as we vary Q. Uh, pass this into the filter and pass that straight out, and now we should have fil filtered bass sound. That's starting to sound more like a bass. Cool. Uh, last thing to add is the wobble, and for that we just need an LFO, which is just a cycle object. It's just a sinusoid. So add a cycle. Now we could drive this cycle using the cycle's internal wave or phase something, but instead I'm going to use a phaser um, and send the output of that phaser into the phase inlet of the cycle. You can actually drive the cycle this way instead of doing it by, um, you know, just setting the cycle's frequency, uh, which can be useful sometimes, and in this case especially. So the, there are four parameters that I want to be able to control here. One is how fast the wobble happens. Um, how much it happens, which is how far up and down it goes, uh, the, the base, the center pitch of the um, wobble, and finally Q. So Q we can just send straight, now we'll do that last. Okay, so this is going to be the speed, how f uh, many times per second we wobble. This is going to be um, how far we wobble up and down. And what I want to do is make how far we wobble up and down a function of um, where exactly we uh, of the center frequency that, around which we're wobbling up and down. So what I mean by that is if I'm at 440 hertz, I want to wobble, say, around 10% of 440 rather than some um, constant number of her uh, constant hertz up and down. That way we'll never accidentally cross zero um, and filter at, say, like negative 200 hertz or something, which actually sounds cool. Try it sometime, um, but not now. So this is going to be uh, how far, or rather our center frequency. So we'll pack this with this, which is going to be how far relative to that, uh, what percent of that frequency we want to wobble up and down. Um, we'll multiply these together and set that here. And this can go straight into here. This is getting ugly. Move this over and clean up a bit. This is, I I, gotta, I know this is sort of fundamental to Max, but it is irritating to have to constantly clean up every little thing you do. Um, 
no, no. I complain a lot in these tutorials. I apologize. No, you know what? I don't apologize. It's one thing I learned from watching Lifetime. Never apologize. That joke didn't make sense. Okay, and finally we pipe Q into the filter down here. All right, and that should be it. Um, what's coming out of here should be something wobbly looking. Let's set the how far we go up and down to, or the frequency to one, how far we go up and down to say 300 and the amount that we're willing to wobble around there by say 20%. Cool, this is moving up and down. Plug this into our filter coefficient generator and now we should hear wobbling. But it's wobbling very slowly. Faster. Yes. Oh my lord. Okay, so the one last thing we might want to do. How much time do we have? Eh, all right. The one last thing we might want to do is set the phase of the wobble back to zero whenever we play a note. I don't know if you can hear it, but when I play a note, the um, we don't start at the same point in the wobble every time I push the note. It's the difference between this and if we. Um, and this. So what I'm going to do is just select for um, one out of this guy and then send, send, re-trigger. Uh, sorry, re-trigger. And then anytime we get a new note on, I'm just going to send that into the phaser here and reset its phase. And what that's going to do is you'll, you'll hear the difference. Um, that's going to make it so that we always start at the same point in the wobble every time we play a note. You can hear the difference, I hope. Um, cool. So that actually completes our wobble base. Uh, the only thing we might want to do now is actually do some, um, set up the MIDI in a way that we like. So I'm gonna save because Max, if, if Max is good at anything, it's at crashing when you add, um, when you add MIDI instruments. Uh, I've got another knob slider control guy here. So I'm going to MIDI parse his stuff too. Let's see, I'm gonna, so my sliders are five through two. Um, I want 5 to Z map 0, 127, let's say between 0 0.5 and 5 for Q. Uh, this is going to get messy, but I'm just going to um, encapsulate it anyway. Um, God, that's terrible advice. Don't do that. Um, Z map 0, 127 between. Um, so in zero, I don't want to move it at all. Uh, zero and zero. One point three. Okay, now for the frequency. See, oh wait, I screwed this up. Roots off by one outlets always ruin me. Z map. Um, let's see. This is the uh, center frequency. So let's make this go between zero. No. Two. No. 150 and 1000. It's probably a pretty reasonable range. Oh, okay. And this here, I don't necessarily want to, to change this continuously. Um, I'd rather just um, jump between certain key values. So let's see, I've got um, some buttons here too. Looks like they go from 23 up to 28. So strip note will give us only when I actually push those buttons. Um, Split 23, 28 to only it be if, since I'm only interested in those values between 23 and 28. I'll subtract 23, so I'm dealing with numbers between 0 and 6, and then root 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I guess between 0 and 5, not 0 and 6. Um, 1, and let's do double, triple, quadruple sextuple and octuple. That's right, bitches. I went to a good kindergarten. Three, four, six, 
8, plug these into this guy. Um, and it probably would be smart to be able to set a base frequency, um, and this would just be the 1 multiple, 2 multiple, 3 multiple, and so on, but I'm not going to do that. Way too lazy. Okay, so you set up all this MIDI stuff, and I'm going to grab it all and hit encapsulate. MIDI stuff. And look at that. It's all clean, kind of. I didn't do that right. Okay, I'll grab this too. MIDI stuff. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. So now we should be able to actually do some interesting stuff with these continuous controls. So let's try it. I can barely hear that. Oh, you know what? I also want to adjust this. Well, who cares? All right. Okay, well, I guess that's the end of that. Um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope that was helpful. Go out and seduce some hipsters, and all the best, guys. Take it easy.